brokers with a difference. Prestige deals in high-end items, uh, playthings of the super rich. With some of the wealthiest clients in Britain. Oh my lord, wow. She's in for a surprise. They specialise in big ticket deals. We were making you an offer. Okay. Of 90,000. <laughs> and the most desirable luxury goods. I kind of deserve them. This time. All I do is give, give, give. Tempers fray. That's like me finding out next week it's a Rembrandt worth 10 million. Expectations are high. The most expensive files went for 53 million and could be massive. And clients feel the pinch. It's a bloody insanity. Welcome to the world of posh porn. There are over 1,000 pawn shops across the UK today, cashing in on our need for fast loans. It's actually in excess of 120,000. This is where entrepreneurs like James Constantino step in. How are you doing, honey? Good. His high-end pawnbroking business... It could be as much as half a million quid. ...specialises in large loans against upmarket valuables. It can have the potential to be absolutely life-changing. We can purchase of you straight away for 15,000. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> There's always pressure to ensure big ticket items keep flowing through their doors. That would be around three and five hundred. Thousand? Retail value, you'll be looking at about a quarter of a million. <laughs> oh my goodness. Joe speaking. It's a busy start to the week at the pawn shop. Boss James has received an inquiry from a vintage car collector who needs a major cash injection fast. It's immaculate, just having been through a major overhaul. Oh, look, oh, look there's a Mustang. There's his Mustang. Yeah, old Joe, that's nice, isn't it? What do you think of that? Look. It's like Starsky and Hutz, or, or was it Dukes of Hazard? But yes, yeah, that sort of thing. Oh, look, he's got a uh, oh, Aston Martin. Nice. Well, this email is from a client who basically has got 12 vehicles that he wants to loan as much as possible against. On vehicles, really, it's all about condition and service history. He says they're in good nick and they're fairly low mileage, so we'll have a look. Expensive cars aren't client Jeremy's only luxury in life. The 56-year-old lives in an eight-bedroom Northamptonshire mansion, along with partner Michelle, and stepchildren Abby and Vicky. I, I, I feel very lucky to live in a house with all these beautiful things, but it is the result of years and years of hard work and never giving up. I, I kind of deserve them, you know. Jeremy made his fortune in finance, but 12 years ago quit the rat race to pursue a personal passion. The reason I sold my financial services business was because I had always had an interest in music and, and I knew I was gifted. And it was really a, a question of, do I go on playing the safe thing or do I follow what I'm supposed to do and what I've learnt all this for, even if it's risky? After a decade living off the proceeds of his company sale and with no major music deal in sight, funds are fast running dry. I knew that I would run out of money and I would live on the edge, but what I believed was that ultimately I would not only make all the money back, but also that I would make a pile more. With Jeremy's new career in music yet to start paying the bills, there are harsh consequences for him and his family. We've had a suspended possession order on the house and we fought off it being repossessed four times. And there's been some pretty intense conversations with mortgage companies during that period and some very frank conversations with bloody lawyers. If Jeremy doesn't pay £25,000 to his creditors in the next fortnight, he and his family will be out on the streets. If this house is repossessed, it'll destroy this village. All these houses will be blighted by it. Lots of people won't be paid so that my mortgage company can get 25 grand when they've been bailed out by the government with billions of pounds of our money. It's a bloody insanity. And the bills keep piling up. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. for coffee sometime. <laughs> Always rushing around, you know what I mean? Thanks Yeah, take care. You can get quite disheartened by it, but, well, I suppose the more nasty letters, the more you deal with these people, the, um, the more you get used to it. It's nice, actually, to receive just normal junk mail. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it can be bills. We, we don't expect people to lend us the money interest-free. We add on a significant sum of money. We've paid a lot of people very generously late. In fact, I've had people reduced to tears by the amount of money I've paid them when we paid them late. 
Despite their splendid surroundings, the whole family are affected by Jeremy's financial situation. We live in a house with no heating all winter. Yep. We don't have a lot of food in the fridge. Mm -hmm. We struggle to get electricity. Mm -hmm. Struggle to pay the bills. I think we're in this situation because he needs to get a job and so does mum. I think he should try and earn his own money rather than asking other people. We should live in a small house and you should get jobs, proper jobs, and have one car that works. I'd rather be in a coffin than live the miserable way a lot of people choose to do. With few options left, Jeremy thinks his 12-strong collection of vintage cars offer a solution. Even if they've seen better days. We need 25,000 quid to clear off the arrears from the evil mortgage company, and the best way to raise that is by pawning the cars. We need the money, but we still might win the lottery tomorrow. You can have a lunch break. You know you can. You're entitled to a lunch break. I'm going to start on Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. I'm going to power walk round the block. I need to get back into shape and feel more healthy. Listen, you need more than a power walk, honestly. Good morning, Prestige. The pawn shop's business model relies on a regular supply of valuable high-ticket items. They're not matching sets. They're all different, are they? They're all matching sets. Hi, right, James. Got a few minutes? Yeah. Today, Lawrence has received an intriguing inquiry about some potentially lucrative antiques. Uh, it's got a Ming vase, yeah. uh, three nice paintings, yeah. and allegedly she's got a glass that uh, Queen Victoria used, her first glass of sherry. How would anyone know that it was the first drink of sherry that she had? If it was in the royal household and it's got the royal crest on it and it had some documentation supporting that by one of the nannies or something like that, then it could... It's going to be a difficult thing to prove, isn't it? Yeah. Initially, I was excited about it, but we did need provenance and we needed some proof that this, in, in fact, was the very glass that Queen Victoria drank from. Well, it's interesting. Yes. So you never know, especially with Ming vase. I mean, the most expensive vase went for 53 million in November 2010, so it could be nothing mm. or it could be massive. Could be Ming, or it could be Minging. <laughs> The so-called regal receptacle belongs to 57-year-old Carame, a horse groomer from the West Country. I've always had horses in my life. I had a pony when I was little, but gave him up to go and do ballet. Stand up, good lad. Mwah. Raised in aristocratic surroundings as part of English noble family, the Beauforts, as a child, Carame lived in the lap of luxury. Here is Ford House. My family home was huge, as you can see. The top floor was all for the kids. I had a ballet room here. This was a railway track room with all the old Hornby railway systems. This was full of trunks and old clothes. Don't know what that was, quite spooky. And then my room was on the end. Beautiful drawing room and dining room and huge gardens full of swimming pools and tennis courts. It was a beautiful place. As a child, Caramay discovered she was adopted with her original family a world away from the English upper classes. This is the picture of my birth mother. I think it's her 21st, and so shortly thereafter she would have been pregnant with me. This sweet photo is um, me at three months, just before my mother gave me up for adoption. Caramay's Australian birth mother fell pregnant during a trip to England when she was 21 and the stigma of being an unmarried mum in the 1950s prevented her keeping her daughter. For her to have given me up, I can't imagine what that must have been like and the pain she must have gone through. Mother and daughter were finally reunited after 40 years apart, but haven't seen one another for over a decade. I really want to go back and see her and my other extended family out there, half-brothers, half-sisters, cousins. You know, she won't be around forever, and so it's really time to see her again. After a well-heeled childhood, Carame lives a more modest life today. My adopted family worked hard to keep the lovely house. It was worth, at one time, like half a million, but I think when my parents had to sell, it was worth an awful lot less. There wasn't a huge amount of wealth at the end of the day. To pay her airfare to Australia, Carame is having to pawn items left to her by her adoptive family, including the Ming vase, family painting, and a glass with a supposedly royal seal of approval. This is the glass that Victoria, Queen Victoria, drank out of on her first house party. 
By pawning the items, Cara May is putting part of her daughter's inheritance at risk. They're objects that have been around for all of my life and always remember, but they're just kind of sat there gathering dust, really. And if she can use them to make this opportunity work, then I think it's, I think it's great. I've really no idea what these, these items are worth. I'm hoping to raise about 5,000. If Caramay's heirlooms don't prove to be genuine, her hopes of seeing her birth mother could soon be dashed. <sighs> Pawnbroking is an unpredictable business, and of late, the pawn shop hasn't been getting the steady stream of high-end customers they need. Pawnbroking is a bit feast or famine. It's been a bit more famine than feast recently. It's just the one watch, yeah. I don't know whether it's the sunshine, uh, whether it's the price of gold, whether it's the price of antiques, wine. I really don't know the reasons behind it. You're there to make money, basically. So, um, yeah, it's not good when, when we are quiet. And with business less than perfect, the last thing Boss James needs from his staff are costly mistakes. This is my paperwork, and this is what you wrote on the side. But you told them to. No, this is what you wrote down. No, that was the other figures you told me that we were getting from Crowdy. Yeah, and then you wrote them down there, and that's what the figures I went off. Yeah, but that's not the figures you should have gone off. Patrick had two figures written down, and the wrong figure was given to his buyer of that bag. So, unfortunately, the bag was undersold. At least you haven't made a loss, Jane. Well, I have. Well, I have. There's no point in selling them for the same money as we've It's there. Paid. It's on there. In your mind, we you have made money. In mine, we have. That's no, just... in your mind, you think you haven't made enough. That's what you're really saying. But well, that's what like I mean. So, taking this painting up the road and selling it for a pound, and it only owes me 50p, and then finding out next week it's a Rembrandt worth 10 million, you saying, oh, don't worry, you made 50p out. Well, yeah, exactly. You made 50p. You haven't lost. Right, that's the end. Yeah, all I do is give, 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 and all you do is take, take, take. All right. Well, we Patrick, I made mistakes occasionally. I have made a mistake. What do you mean occasionally? Oh, Hoping to provide a boost to the pawn shop's fortunes is Lawrence. He's travelled to Bath to assess new client Caramay's antique items. I'm really hoping that Lawrence will find something of, of, of real value. I mean, if he said, oh, yeah, I'd give you 50 quid for that and 20 quid for that, I'd, I'd say, well, jog on. The meeting is also crucial for Caramay, who needs to raise money to visit her birth mother in Australia. Well, I can see straight away one of the pictures. Well, there's the family portrait, the Beaufort. This isn't signed, but then I haven't taken the back off. There yeah. may well be a signature at the back. Usually, with any painting we usually take in, the signature's important, so we know who the artist is. Obviously, any provenance at all, so any paperwork, which I know you haven't got. So what we'll have to do is we'll take that away with us and we'll get it okay. looked at. Provenance basically means proving where it's come from, where it's been. It's just like a history. It's like its own passport, really. Carame is convinced her Ming vase will be the item that really gets Lawrence excited. That was left to me as a really valued item. Yeah. But in it has no marking. Ah, oh, no, that's a shame about the markings. I know. Because that would be much easier to actually identify. Not saying it isn't. There's one last item, inherited from her adoptive parents, that could give Carame and the pawn shop the good news they both desperately need. Now, this is really intriguing. Well, this has always been known as Queen Victoria's glass. Yeah. It's actually not particularly fine. It's not crystal or beautifully carved. It's actually quite simple, but it does have the coronet on it. Yeah, which is the royal household. Yes. All of these I'll take away with me today because we've just got to really look, look into them. As soon as we've got an amount, we'll get back to you. It'll be good news, hopefully. Do your best. Be my white knight, Lawrence. I will be your white knight. Well, definitely, I've got to. You know, I don't want to be the Grim Reaper, so I've <laughs> got to be the opposite to the Grim Reaper. Thanks, Carrie. Speak to you soon. I really liked him. I just felt he's really on side and that he'll, um, he'll re do his best. Now, I'm not an expert on all these items, and there is, unfortunately, the chance that it could be worth, not worth anything. My target is to raise £5,000. Just as long as I've got enough money to get out to Australia to see my mum, that would be perfect. Back in Weybridge, whilst Lawrence starts work on Caramay's collection, James has received an email about an unusual and potentially valuable silver ornament. Silver elephants come in as well. Oh! But let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Come on, let me see. Is it solid silver? Apparently. Oh, my God. When we've had a quiet week in particular, it's always great when a big ticket item comes through the door and can turn your whole week around. It really does uh, lift the team. You don't see silver elephants every day. It's the first for us, so 
It looks like it could be worth a few quid. Could be a good one. The elephant's owner is 22-year-old Rupert, a musician with a taste for the finer things in life. The cars I've had is an Alfa Romeo, a Saab, Mercedes, got this Range Rover, plus another Range Rover as well. Oh, my new Range Rover is getting the chrome down the side. I've got different mirrors going on. It's all going to be tinted. It's going to have my um, my initials in this side. I do like having nice stuff. Yeah, I mean, I do spend quite a lot on these items, but I feel like I'm working quite hard for it, so I feel like I should spoil myself sometimes. I'm a bit of a watch collector. Um, I've got eight or nine watches. The F1 Hoblots, I've got two or three of them. And they're classy, they're unique, not many people have them. Google it and it'll come up with about 12, 15 grand each. Although still based at his mum's home in Somerset, Rupert is in demand as a drummer, playing major clubs and parties across the world. I've gone to Cavos, I've gone to Ibiza. I'm in Marbella a lot. I've got a nice little apartment over there. Great lifestyle, you know, it's the sun, the sea. That's Ocean Club in Marbella. Very expensive booze. The bottle of vodka there has cost seven to eight grand. But I've worked with the Ministry of Sound DJ, Tiny Tempers DJ, and I do a little bit of session work as well. Rupert believes his progress as a professional musician is being hampered by the cramped studio in his mum's shed. I feel like I'm growing out of it because I've got more equipment, more stuff, and I can't really take people into a little log cabin shed around the back of my house. I would need to raise 30,000 just to have quite nice acoustics in there, quite nice sound, quite nice speakers. To finance his drumming dreams, Rupert turned to family members. I went to my grandparents for a loan, but instead of them giving me money, they gave me a silver elephant. I think it is an um, unusual thing for a 22-year-old to be poor and to be fair. My granddad bought it for my grandma for their anniversary. A great big silver elephant, you know. I've never seen one in my life. It is real silver, it's silver all the way through, it's got the hallmarks, and some people are just happy to have a solid silver ring, but, you know, I've got a, a solid silver elephant. I hope to get about 30 to 40,000 for the elephant. But will his grandparents' gift be worth the five figures Rupert needs? Let's hope for the best. Good afternoon, Christine. Rupert's travelled with his elephant to the pawn shop, looking for a loan to create his new studio. Good afternoon, how are you? Oh, how can I help? Hi. I've got a silver elephant, which I would like to pawn. Jesus. I'm looking for 30,000. Um, I'm looking to loan it. So what gives you the idea that'd be worth? My dad I went to Harrods one time and there was an elephant in there for 120, 130. Was it the same size, sort of? Couldn't that, really. Yeah. That is a beast. Have you named him? Um, I have named her. Her? What have um, you... I named it Ellie. Ellie. All the elephants I've seen since this are much smaller. So it's something I'll take off for you. That's fine. Um, and we'll have to get it up to our experts to have a look at. That's fine. OK. Thank you. Speak to you soon, See Rupert. you soon. And nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. Joe, mm? I've got an elephant for you. Look at this. That is a beast. Have you checked if it's a boy or girl? Rupert has said it's a girl, and I'm really not going to go rummaging around the never regions of a silver elephant to prove him right or wrong. Well, there would certainly be extra silver involved well, that, exactly. if it was a male. You might have an extra few kilos <laughs> there if it's a male. Lawrence will have to send the elephant to an expert to discover if it's worth anything like the sum Rupert has in mind. <laughs> While Rupert is keen to raise cash for business reasons, James is off to meet a man whose needs are rather more urgent. Well, Jeremy has told me that all the cars are in nice order, so um, I'm expecting to see some, uh, some lovely motor vehicles today here. Yeah. There they are. There's six vehicles here. I don't know if these all... Are the ones he's looking to present. Well, that one looks like it's sunk in the driveway, but it's got a bird's nest in the hub, that one. I'm not sure about that. Let's see, let's see what he's got. Yeah. Greetings, James. In under two weeks, Jeremy's family home will be repossessed unless he finds £25,000. That's the meeting. Yeah. Really good. Good, good. His last shot at raising the money 
pawning his vintage car collection. Jeremy, you've got a lot of cars here. Some of them need some work. At the moment, they've got flat batteries, so they all, one by one, they want to go in and, and, and be fixed up. This one's got a bit of uh, body work. A sure. rust around there, we'll, we'll have that fixed up. It's 44,000 miles, uh, 12 years old. And I was, to be honest with you, quite disappointed with uh, some of the condition of the vehicles. It's like there's a bird's nest in there. And this is a Mercedes 230CE. Again, it's not running at the moment. Right. Uh, inside the garage, we've got a, a Countex mower, large sit-on mower. Um... <laughs> Jeremy's range of wheels have so far failed to impress. A less than pristine Daimler is next for inspection. It needs to be fully restored. Yeah, you're not wrong, are you? No. <laughs> All the cars I've got here, I've got because they're the best dealers of these cars. They're like the best, the best gel of wine, you yeah, know. Okay. So that's why they look so good. What sort of money are you thinking about? Really, twenty-five thousand quid. Right. Okay. I mean, Does that makes sense. Is, yep. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Well, anything's possible within reason. Ever, I everything in life is. <laughs> Have you got anything else tucked away in the house? Quite a nice grand piano. Piano. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's have a little look. See what the uh, see what the piano is all about, and uh, see if it's going to be any good. It sounds do you, interesting. Do you, do you play? I don't play. You no. Never have. No. Never sung. I played triangle at school do once. You? This is the one, is it? This, this is, is the Steinway Concert Ground piano. How does it sound? It's a fabulous piano. Mm. <laughs> See? I'll tell you there what, you go. I was good, wasn't I? You were. <laughs> it's one of the last original Steinways because they have relatively recently changed hands and been sold. Mm, okay. You've mentioned the uh, 25k. How quickly do you need this money out? I mean, how desperate are you? We are, in theory, facing eviction from the house. We could ha have people turning up here to evict us in ten days. Really? Is that serious? Oh, well. Yes, it, it, it is. So there's no pressure on them. No pressure, <laughs> no. We'd love to help you with this, and we'll go to work with this straight away. Okay. Send me the spec, the serial number, Absolutely. the photographs, yep. where you got it from, yep. how much you paid. Yep. I think this is probably going to be the way we can move things forward. Mm -hmm. It may be the key to saving his home, but for Jeremy, parting with his piano will be a lot harder than waving goodbye to his wheels. The piano is my heart and my soul. I understand that I may have to put it at risk in order to save the house, but in the end, I do believe that things do work out and the right opportunities come at the right time. Well, he's an interesting guy, to say the least. He really is quite uh, an eccentric, but the cars proved to be a bit of a disappointment. Luckily, he had the piano. I'm not 100% sure about it at the moment. I need to do a bit more research. If we don't get him this cash, then uh, he's going to be out on his ears. But I'm not convinced at this stage he actually has got the money there. It's midway through the month at the pawn shop. James speaking. And although there's been a steady stream of customers... James speaking. <laughs> Big ticket items are still proving few and far between, putting pressure on James and his team. How many times have I told you no, that shouldn't that's be on the market? Moved, that's moved. No, it hasn't. But there's always hope that business will pick up soon. Good morning. Good morning. How can I help you? Hi, I wondered if you'd like to look at a ring that I've got. I'd love to look at the ring. Yeah. Jesus. That's a ring and a half, isn't it? Where did you get the ring from? It was a boyfriend a long, long time ago. So what was he, a sheik or a footballer? He was a trader. Obviously a very good trader. <laughs> Obviously. Now, that really is exceptional, that ring. So what are you looking to do with it? Um, I'm looking to sell it. OK. Have you got any idea what you're looking for? I really haven't got an idea. That's got to be at least five to six carat. So it's a big diamond. Mm -hmm. So something like a carrot, I'd buy off you immediately. Yeah. This, I want to do some research on. So what I'll do is take it off you for a couple of days and see what we can get for you. OK. OK, brilliant. Been in touch in the next couple okay. of days. Thanks Cheers. very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. It really was an amazing ring. I mean, even Kim Kardashian would have been knocked bandy by it. I mean, I wish I could afford to buy one for my wife. James, are you free? Really, really nice piece. Wow. Oh, my it. God. Yeah. It's gorgeous, isn't it? What does she want to do with it? She wants to sell it. 
is a bit of a humdinger, to say the least, isn't it? I mean, yeah, look at it really it. is. What's the story, then? My boyfriend is a trader, and they split up years ago. She just stuck it in the cupboard and forgot about it. Oh, my God. I might get engaged to a trader. <laughs> When Carol came in with that ring, it really was uh, a great feeling, and I did think this could be the one to turn the week around. Eager to find out just how valuable the ring is, James heads to Chelsea to see flamboyant jeweller Ian Towning. I've got an inkling. I don't really want to sort of... I try to push it to the back of my head because I don't want to be disappointed in any way, but... I think it's going to be quite a good number for her. Ian. Hello. Hello. How are you? Right? you? Good to see you. Wow, well, this is a surprise. You all right? <laughs> I've got something for you. Mmm, I bet you have, darling. <laughs> oh, my lord. Wow. Is it certificated? No. Well, it looks superb, you know. It's a good stone, it's a good look. How much is she looking for to...? She hasn't got a clue. Have you had the stone measured or measured it or anything? We haven't measured it yet. We think it's, well, it's at least five carats. Five carats plus, plus yeah. yeah. It is good, it's clean, it's sparkles well. So I think... Well, it's worth a bit of money. Yeah. She's in for a surprise. She's never had it appraised, so wow. she is going to be jumping up and down for joy when she hears that. <laughs> Having left the ring forgotten in a sock drawer for three decades, single mum Carol could be in line for an unexpected windfall. It's everyone's dream to uh, think that they've got some little keepsake and then it ends up being worth a lot of money. If the pawnbrokers bring good news, Carol plans to splash out on a holiday for her two sons. Oh, God, I don't want to get my hopes up too much. I would be so pleased and surprised if it was about ten grand, but... I don't know if it's as much as that, but it would be fantastic if it was. The recent arrival of a big ticket item means spirits are high in the office. James does do a lot of heavy lifting. He gets well stuck in. He's not one of these to get up and do that, do that. He gets involved, you know. Look at him, look. <laughs> Bless him. You be careful. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Bath, Carame is on tenterhooks. Will the value of her heirlooms be enough to fund a visit to Australia to see her birth mother? If I don't get the money, it will be pretty catastrophic, actually. I just can't let Mum down again. I can't. I've promised her year after year that I'm going to be out there, and she's so excited about it, I just can't let her down. I don't know. I'm excited about hearing from Prestige. I mean, if they come back and say it's all rubbish... <laughs> I don't know what I'll do. Currently standing between Carame and her long-awaited trip is Lawrence. He's off to a specialist auctioneer to get her items valued. Any one of these items could come in with the um, asset that she needs, um, or it could go the other way. Hello, John, how are you? Hi, morning, Lawrence. But this is exciting. Allegedly, it's the glass that uh, Queen Victoria took her first sip of sherry from. 16 when she had her first sip of sherry okay, from there. Okay, so we're talking about 1835. Yeah. I would say that this glass was made at least 100 years later. There's a lot of things that come through this door yeah. that have a story. Yeah. And then the person like yourself says, well, we can't prove that story. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why you can't prove it? Yeah. Because it's not right. It didn't happen. It's not right at all. It's not going to happen, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Let's see what else you got. OK, well, the next item is hopefully one of the more interesting items. The client seems to think it's Ming Vars. I mean, I can't see it. There's no markings. Do you know what? I have got the identical vase... You're joking. ..in the sale next week. 17th century, correct, Wukai. Yeah. There it is there, lot 232. And this is period. I mean, this is what it purports to be. This is the type of art that is selling in the English auction rooms. Right, the last one, um, we've got no provenance. Um, and what it's meant to be, or 
the, the client alleges, it's Sir Francis uh, Beaufort's son and wife. It's a nice picture. It's charming. It's commercial. It's saleable. Well, it's really nice. Oh, I, I love it. I was surprised about the Victorian glass. That was very disappointing. But the painting and the actual Ming vase, you know, have exceeded what I expected. Thank Cheers, you. Mate. God bye bless. Bye. I've now got a figure in my head. I'll go back to the office now, discuss it with James, and see where we are. Another client who urgently needs good news is Jeremy. He and his family face eviction from their home in less than a week, and James is hurriedly attempting to get his grand piano valued. What do you think of that, then, eh? Oh, it's lovely. Really nice. Yeah? Mmm. I mean, I, I love Jeremy. He's a brilliant guy. He's a great character, and I really would like to get this deal done for him. It'd be nice to save the day, ride into town on a, a white horse and uh, stop him from being repossessed. That would be brilliant. <laughs> Jeremy, meanwhile, is somewhat more relaxed about the situation. People viewing from outside would say, oh, he ought to get a job and a little baby house. But then, you see, when you have something that you've worked for and aspired for, you know, it, it, it gives your life a meaning. This is my home, and I will do anything that I have to do in order to keep it. You know, it's a special place. <laughs> James's expert has arrived to value the piano. Hi. Hello, Jeremy. How are you doing? How am Anthony Sheargold? Good bailiff, not there. <laughs> well, right. Where is it? It's through there. Yeah. Help yourself. It's a nice-looking piano. Right, well, we know what we've got. We've got a Model D Steinway. Yeah, it'll probably need a bit of regulation because it's, you know, it's 13 years old. I think I'll Lovely be the time. judge of that one. You'll be the judge of that one. <laughs> you say it's 13 years. It is. You're spot on. Mm. That piano is unique and, and would be impossible to replace. But in the end, it's part of a grand plan of something bigger than me, you know. It's a bit like swans. You have to let things go to let something else in, you know. And, th and then if it comes back to you, it was always yours. So I believe this will be back, you know. I think we're on the threshold of, of, of huge things opening up for us. Hello, James speaking. At the pawn shop, James receives the crucial call from the piano expert. Not a bad piano. It's Wants a little bit of work doing to it, a bit of surface work, cleaning up, a uh, bit of work to the inside regulation. OK. That type of thing. But Overall, it's in, it's in quite a good condition. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for your call. James has managed to find something he can loan against, but will it be enough to prevent Jeremy from losing his home? Back at the pawn shop, there's been a healthy influx of new clients. Hello, how are you? So you'd like to sell it? Yes. Lawrence? Yes. Would you mind giving me a hand to carry this elephant? Yeah, no But problem. Joe is hoping that Rupert's silver elephant will be the elusive big-ticket item. Come on, Nelly. She's taking it to expert Ian to discover its value. There's a similar thing in Harrod that was worth £130,000. We need to find out a bit more about it, and Ian, Ian's our main guy that we feel we'll know about that, so... Oh, that's so kind of you. Cheers. It's a big old elephant in there. I don't want to drop it. <laughs> I have brought you something exotic. Exotic? <laughs> it's an exotic creature. Oh, my God, fathers. <laughs> oh, my Lord. An elephant. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of this? Quite interesting. It's lovely to look mm. at. What is important that the trunk is going up and not going down? <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely object. It's a very attractive thing. You know, Harrods carry these elephants right. in different sizes. What would you say it was worth? If you went to Harrods to buy one, yeah. you're talking quite a few thousand pounds. Oh, really? Yeah. Do we know whether it's filled or not? It definitely is hallmarked. Mm. And I would say, yes, it is filled. What Never. a shame. Never mind. To keep the price down, you fill them with a the resin. If it was solid silver, you're talking way over £100,000. As it is not solid silver, they're saying, darling, I'm paying for resin. No, thank you. It has a value, a decent enough value. So you've got to think about that. I like it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I really you like know, it. I would live with it. Oh, I would totally. I said that. I'd love that in mm -hmm. my house. So that's really helpful, Ian. All right, well, we better pack her back up. 
Oh. She's going to have to come back with me. Bye. <laughs> Despite regularly handling the jewels of Surrey's rich, the team is still spellbound by Carol's diamond ring. Did she say how much she wants for it? This is the thing, she's got no idea. Did she say what she thought it was worth yeah, or anything? No, she's got no idea. She's got she no idea. absolutely no oh idea at God. all. Oh, my God. I feel quite nervous. Um, all I really want is to, to, just to get a nice holiday from this, and if, if, that, if that's what I get from it, I'll be completely happy with it. 20 years after it was given to her by an ex-boyfriend, the single mum is about to discover what her ring could fetch in today's market. Hello. Hello, Carol. Hi. It's Lawrence. Hiya. I've been a bit of a stressful couple of days for you waiting for this phone call. I do feel a little bit nervous. No, I've looked at it, something like that. I really have to get second opinions. We've had a second and a third opinion. Um, and we've all come up with the same amount. Well, you must have some idea of what you thought the ring would be worth. No, I don't, actually. I don't have any idea of what it's worth. OK, well, say if I offered you £30,000 for it. I think you'd be having a joke. Well, that's a lot of money, isn't it? We were making you an offer of 90,000. <laughs> what do you think of that? I think you're sort of having a laugh, really. I'm not having a laugh. I wouldn't have a laugh. Not with James's money, he'd kill me. Oh, I'm speechless, to be honest. Um... I'd be speechless. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. So you're happy? Yeah, of course I am. I'm really happy. I just, um, there's like a million things going around in my head, to be honest with you. OK, then, well, thank you. Don't really know what to say, yeah, but thank no. you very much. Well, I'm glad. I hope I've made your evening. You definitely have, yes, you definitely have. Thanks a lot. Cheers. OK, bye-bye. He said 90,000. I feel stunned. I just feel really stunned. I can't, I just can't believe that I'd come into that kind of money. <laughs> you can hear in her voice she's really pleased. I'm pleased as well. Who likes giving bad news? The best news to give is good news. It will change things for me. I won't have another 20 years on my mortgage. God, that's amazing. It's really amazing. Prestige. After a roller coaster month at the pawn shop, hello, how are you? Hi. Business is booming. It's quite a nice little watch, actually. Yeah, it's very nice. Doodles, what's this? In Bath, Caramay is waiting to find out if her antique collection can fund a ticket to Australia to visit her birth mother, who gave her up for adoption 57 years ago. Right now, I'm really nervous because this is the moment I find out whether the items that I've given up are actually going to be enough. If we don't raise enough, it's going to be a bit sad. <laughs> Might even cry. It's left to Lawrence to break the news to Caramay. I've just had a discussion with James. We've agreed the figures, so now it's D-Day time to give her a call. Hello? Hello. Is that Caramay? Yes, hi. Yes, it's Lawrence from Prestige. Hello, Lawrence. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. So what I thought I'd do is go through each individual item. Yeah. So you know um, the score on them. OK, all right. Uh, OK. The first um, item was a Queen Victoria glass. Well, I've got bad news on you for that one. Oh, God. The glass was manufactured... ..between 50 and 75 years yeah. after. It'd be about £20 it would sell as a piece. Yeah, OK. I thought, I, yeah, yeah, OK. Now, the um, second glass item is, is a Burfoot family painting. Yeah. The hammer price on that, or what do you want to put into auction at, would be at least two to 3000 Yeah, OK. The highlight of the, the your lovely collection... Yeah was the alleged Ming vase. Yeah. Just to let you know... You, you are an owner of a 17th century... The Emperor Shunzi Ming vase. It is the genuine article. Oh, God, now, OK. If you, Wasuki, if you put that into auction, he would put it between five to eight hundred pounds. The item is a genuine Ming vase, but crucially, it doesn't originate from the Chinese royal household, which reduces its value significantly. So anyway, just to get to the, the final offer, we would lend you £1,500 against those items. OK, all right. 
Think about All it right. and we'll go from there. Okay, darling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Karen may sound disappointed, but the money we've offered her, she can actually get to Australia. I have got enough money to get to Australia. I mean, that's that was my bottom line. So, yeah, we are at bottom line. That is the lowest that I'd hoped for, literally. Which is why I'm feeling quite emotional about it. Back at the pawn shop, the team are preparing to make 22-year-old Rupert an offer. Joe, um, can you give the silver elephant man a quick tinkle? OK. He's waiting to hear what the pawn shop can loan him against his grandparents' silver elephant. Anything can help me out with my, my project. The session drummer wants £30,000 to build a state-of-the-art recording space and leave his cramped home studio behind. Hello. Rupert, hi, it's Joe here at Prestige. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Yeah, not about yourself. Oh, good, yeah, very well, thank you. It was nice to um, see that lovely elephant of yours. Um, we found out some information. It is silver. It isn't actually solid silver. I didn't know if you were aware of that. Nope, I didn't know. No, it is actually filled with a resin. Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, so, oh, unfortunately, um, no, that values does it. mean that it's worth less than if it was obviously solid silver. Um, so there is an offer that we can put forward to you. I don't think it's along the lines of what you were um, hoping. Yeah. But we could offer you a loan of five thousand. Okay. So I'm a little bit disappointed about it, but I feel. I feel, you know, it's fine. You know, it, it starts me off and it gets me somewhere, you know? Oh, I know. Anything helps? Yeah, yeah of course. Thanks, Rupert. Good Thanks luck. Very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Oh, bless him. He was disappointed. He thought it was solid silver. Well, I'm a little bit disappointed. It's not 10,000, but you always want a little bit more. I feel like I'm glad I've got a little bit of money that I can work with, you know, go from there, really. For now, Rupert will have to come up with a plan B to start his rock and roll revolution. In less than a week, Jeremy's family home of 30 years will be repossessed, unless the pawn shop can lend him £25,000. I very much want to keep this house. I've worked too hard, I've taken too many risks to lose it. It's a strange, surreal feeling to consider that we could theoretically be out of this house in a week. Jeremy's cars, unfortunately, didn't quite meet up to uh, our expectations. There is potentially one vehicle there that we could actually loan against. Jeremy's also willing to pawn his beloved grand piano, but will it be worth enough to save his house? Let's give the guy a call. Hello. Jeremy, hi, it's James here. James, how are you doing? Not bad, mate. I've been working on the piano, and it's uh, very unusual items. Very much so, yeah. When's the deadline? Uh, well, we, we, we've got to pay them the money on, on Wednesday. Yes. We are able to present you with a figure. What we have come to is... 20 grand on the piano. And we're able to... Loan you 6,000 on the... Mustang. OK. So it gets you to where you need to yes, be. Yes, it does. Very nice. Cheers. Bye. <sighs> Once I get my teeth into someone, I'll always try and find a way in which to raise some capital. So, yeah, it was important that we got a deal closed for Jeremy. The reward comes if you take the risks and you hold your nerve and you play a bit of poker, which I've got better at over the years. <laughs> the loan will keep the wolves at least temporarily from the door and rescue Jeremy and his family from eviction. Hi there. James has offered uh, £26,000. I think that it's a pretty good outcome. Jeremy, are we still getting evicted? I think it's unlikely. That's absolutely <laughs> terrible. Excellent. It's a no-brainer, isn't it, really? Um, a house or a piano. Even though the piano is very special, a house does really need to come first. It's a massive loss, seeing it go. I have a genuine feeling that I'm going to win the lottery. And I have a feeling that because I've let that piano go, I may even win it this week. Take care of it.
one week after accepting the loan from the pawn shop, Karame lands in Australia to be reunited at last with her birth mother. Just arrived, it was a fantastic flight, and now I'm just about to see mum. So it's uh, really the end of an amazing journey, so absolutely thrilled to be here. It's really amazing. <laughs> oh, darling. <laughs> It's been a whole 10 years, so being able to see her properly and us to spend quality time together. Look at you. Okay. Oh. Give me a hug. Mm -hmm. And just being mum and daughter, it's going to be really exciting. We've got a lot yeah. of catching up to do. The money we lend out can literally be life changing. Not to see a mum for 10 years must be a horrible thing. So, you know, this is important. And I feel good about it at the end of the day.